Many of the creature comforts we take for granted today are actually thousands of years old. From the very first calendars to urban planning to the first experiments with steam power, the people of the ancient world made some incredible discoveries that in some cases weren't fully realized until the modern era. This list shows some of the most surprising examples of modern technology found in ancient times. Toothpaste, Egypt, c. 500 BC, in the time before pyramids and pharaohs, the clever people of Egypt came up with one of the first ways to keep their smiles bright and their breath fresh, toothpaste. They didn't have tubes or fancy brushes like we do, but they gathered up some special ingredients from around their land. They'd take beautiful purple iris flowers, grind them up fine, and mix them with some salty rock salt that sparkled like the Nile River. For a bit of a zing, they'd add in some peppery spice and the cool, minty scent of a plant we still love today. This magical mix they'd call toothpaste, and they'd rub it on their teeth with their fingers, making them pearly white and smelling like a summer breeze. And guess what? It wasn't just sparkling smiles the Egyptians cared about. Along the banks of the Nile, thousands of years ago, lived the first ever dentists. These wise folks understood the importance of healthy teeth and used their skills to fix problems and keep everyone's chompers working strong. So, next time you brush your teeth with your fancy toothpaste and toothbrush, remember the clever Egyptians who started it all with flowers, salt, and a little bit of pepper. Cisterns, ancient Carthage, c. 300 BC, in the ancient world, the proud city of Carthage held its chin high alongside the mighty Rome. Though time has worn Carthage down, much like a forgotten melody whispered on the wind, its echoes still tell stories of grandeur. While crumbling remnants may stand where once majestic buildings gleamed, Carthage in its prime was no pale shadow of its Roman counterpart. It was a dazzling jewel, a vibrant heart, pumping life into the Mediterranean world for centuries before Rome even dreamt of such glory. One of the many feats that set Carthage apart was its water supply system a marvel that would make even modern engineers nod in appreciation. Imagine, long before factories belched smoke and machines hummed, the people of Carthage enjoyed water streaming right into their homes. No more lugging heavy buckets from distant wells, no more waiting in dusty queues. Water, lifeblood of both city and man, flowed smoothly and generously at their fingertips. This wasn't just convenience, it was a testament to the ingenuity and foresight of Carthaginian society, a society that wasn't afraid to push the boundaries of the known world. So, while the wind may whistle through broken columns and sunbaked stones, let us not forget the vibrant melody that once resonated from Carthage. This wasn't just another city, it was a pioneer, a beacon of innovation. A living testament to the power of human ambition. Its story, though faded, is still one to be sung, a reminder that even in the ruins of forgotten empires, greatness can echo through the ages. Flamethrowers from the Byzantine Empire, 672 BC, the Byzantine Empire, famous for its long and enduring existence, wasn't afraid to think outside the box when it came to staying on top. One of their secret weapons to rule the waves was a fiery concoction called Greek fire. Imagine setting enemy ships ablaze, scorching the wood and turning unfortunate sailors into human torches, that's the kind of havoc this stuff could wreak, their rivals tried again and again to figure out what went into this terrifying brew, but the recipe stayed locked away like a pirate's treasure. Unfortunately, sometime in the 12th century, the secret of Greek fire vanished like smoke in the wind. To this day, even scientists with fancy labs and complicated equipment haven't managed to crack the code completely. That's how mysterious and powerful this fiery weapon was, think of it like a magic potion from a story, only instead of turning you into a frog, it turned your boat into a bonfire. Even though we don't know everything about it, just its legend alone tells us how much of a game-changer Greek fire was for the Byzantines, helping them stay afloat and powerful for centuries. So next time you hear about an empire that lasted for over a thousand years, remember the fiery secret that might have helped them keep the flames of victory burning bright. Steam Turbine, Ancient Greece, 1st century AD, in the blink of history, way back in the 1st century, a guy named Hero of Alexandria dreamed up a contraption called the Yalapile. 
It was, get this, the first ever steam turbine. Imagine a ball with tubes sticking out like arms, not your usual beach ball, mind you. Inside this fancy sphere, water bubbled away like crazy whenever someone gave it a good heating. The steam whooshed out the tubes like mini rockets, spinning the ball around and round. Pretty neat, right? Thing is, back then, nobody really saw the big picture. The yala pile was mostly a party trick, something to wow friends at a barbecue with. It didn't haul ships or spin factories. But who cares? It was the spark of an idea, a tiny seed that wouldn't blossom for centuries, fast forward a thousand years or so, and a Spanish sailor named Blasco de Garay had a vision. He saw this ancient whirring ball and thought, that, my friends, is the heart of a giant boat. He tweaked Hero's design, built a steam-powered monster, and pitched it to the powers that be. Unfortunately, they weren't buying it. Maybe they thought his ship was too fantastical, or maybe they just weren't ready for a watery revolution. So, poor Blasco's dream sank to the bottom of the ocean, leaving the world chugging along without steam for another couple hundred years, but don't shed a tear. Eventually. In the year 1838, the world finally caught up with Hero and Blasco. Steamships started popping up everywhere, churning the waters and changing the game. It may have taken some time, but those early steam dreams finally set sail, proving that even the wildest ideas can blossom into something truly grand, so, the next time you see a cruise ship gliding by, remember the Yala pile, the little ball that dreamt big. It may not have steered the way, but it lit the spark, and that's a pretty cool legacy to have. Central heating from a Roman villa, c. 1st century BC, imagine living in a chilly stone house back in the days before central heating. BR. The Romans, known for their clever inventions, came up with a genius solution, the Hypocost, an underfloor heating system that kept them warm and toasty even during the coldest months, think of it like this, they built a raised floor held up by tiny brick pillars. This created a hidden space underneath, like a secret cozy cave. In this cave, they built a furnace or firebox, much like a fireplace. The burning wood or coal created hot air and smoke, which, instead of going up the chimney, was cleverly directed under the floor through the gaps between the pillars. This hot air then spread out under the raised floor, warming it like a giant heating pad. And voila! The room above stayed wonderfully warm, without any smoky air polluting the space. It was like having sunshine trapped beneath your feet, this clever trick wasn't just a Roman thing. Way back in ancient Korea, people had a similar idea called the Vandal. They built their houses over heated flues underground, warming the floor in a similar way to the Hypocost. And guess what? This invention isn't just a relic of the past. Many modern Korean homes still use a modernized version of the Ondal for heating, keeping their families warm and comfortable on even the coldest winter nights. So next time you feel a chill in your toes, remember these ancient marvels of engineering. The Romans and Koreans, with their brilliant underfloor heating systems, show that keeping warm can be both clever and cozy. Calendar, Warren Field, Scotland, c. 800 BC, way back in the year 2004, tucked away in a quiet field in Scotland, archaeologists stumbled upon something incredible, the world's oldest calendar. Imagine that, a system for keeping track of time, crafted not by kings or scientists, but by ordinary hunter-gatherers living as far back as 8,000 years before Christ, this amazing calendar wasn't made of fancy clocks or digital screens. It was simply a clever arrangement of 12 holes dug into the earth, each one mimicking the phases of the moon. By watching the moon wax and wane, and seeing which hole it lined up with, these ancient people could keep track of the lunar months, knowing when seasons changed and food became available. Now, you might be thinking, isn't that just common sense? Wouldn't anyone look at the moon to mark the passage of time? Well, you'd be surprised. This unique calendar hasn't been found anywhere else in Britain or Europe, making it a one-of-a-kind discovery. It shows that even these early humans, who we often think of as simple cave dwellers, were actually quite sophisticated. 
They understood the patterns of the sky, invented their own timekeeping system, and passed it down through generations, so the next time you glance at a calendar, remember this incredible find in Scotland. It's a reminder that even the simplest things, like tracking time, can be a testament to human ingenuity. And that even in the deepest past, there were people who were smarter and more resourceful than we might imagine. An alarm clock from ancient Egypt, 3rd century BC, long before the dreaded blaring of your Monday morning alarm, people were looking for ways to wake up at a set time. Back in the days of Greece, two super smart guys named Plato and Tisibius were tinkering with ways to tell them when it was time to rise and shine, Plato, who lived way back in 428 BC, took a water clock and tricked it out so it could whistle like a kettle after a certain amount of time had passed. Imagine that, waking up to a friendly whistling water clock instead of a harsh buzzing. Tisibius, another brain box from around 285 BC, also liked the water clock idea, but with a twist. He rigged it up to drop pebbles onto a gong, creating a gentle wake-up symphony. So, even though we might groan at our modern alarms, remember, people have been trying to find ingenious ways to avoid oversleeping for centuries. Automatic machine designs in Alexandria, 1st century AD, this ancient book, Automata, isn't just a dusty relic from the 1500s, it's a mind-bending journey into the genius of Hero, a 1st century engineer who lived in Alexandria. Imagine a world where wind wasn't just a breeze, but a conductor, orchestrating melodies on a wind-powered organ. Picture a temple where the doors swing open like magic, not by a push or pull, but by a clever dance of pulleys and weights. Hero's imagination wasn't confined by the limitations of his time. He dreamt up contraptions that sound like something out of a futuristic sci-fi movie, take the holy water dispenser, a precursor to the modern vending machine. Imagine a weary traveler, parched and seeking blessings, approaching a temple. Instead of a grumpy priest, they'd find a gleaming machine, ready to dispense holy water with a simple coin. Or step into a grand temple, where the doors whisper open and shut, guided by an unseen hand, a symphony of ropes and weights choreographed by Hero's genius, these weren't just toys or parlor tricks. Hero's inventions were whispers of a future where technology and ingenuity could blur the lines between the mundane and the miraculous. He planted the seeds of ideas that would blossom centuries later, influencing everything from automated doors to self-playing music boxes, so when you look at this book, don't just see faded ink and yellowing pages. See a portal to a world where the impossible danced on the edge of reality, fueled by the boundless imagination of a man who was centuries ahead of his time. Urban Planning and Air Conditioning, Mohenjo-daro, c. 2500 BC, nestled alongside Harappa, the ancient city of Mohenjo-daro sparkled as a crown jewel of the Indus Valley civilization. Unlike its modern counterparts, Mohenjo-daro didn't boast towering skyscrapers or bustling highways. Instead, its beauty lay in the thoughtful and meticulous way it was planned and built. Imagine a city where the streets ran straight and orderly, like lines drawn on a giant parchment. Houses huddled together, not haphazardly tossed about, but carefully arranged, making the most of the space, but Mohenjo-daro wasn't just about neat and tidy rows. This clever city had a secret weapon to keep its residents comfortable, a hidden guardian against the scorching sun and stifling heat. Deep within the walls of each home, windows were cunningly positioned, not just for light, but to capture the slightest whisper of wind. As the breeze danced through these openings, it whisked away the stuffy air, carrying with it the heat of the day. It was like having a natural air conditioner, thousands of years before anyone even imagined such a contraption, imagine, dear reader, the delight of returning home after a long day under the blazing sun. Stepping through the doorway, you'd be greeted not by stifling heat, but by a gentle, cooling breeze, whispering its sweet welcome. In a world without electricity or fans, this clever design would have been a true blessing, making the lives of Mohenjo-daro's citizens just a little bit more pleasant. So, while it may not have had flashing neon lights or roaring engines, Mohenjo-daro possessed a different kind of magic. 
It was a city whispered to life by the wind, a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of its people, who turned nature's breath into a cool comfort before technology even stepped onto the stage. Advanced Metallurgy, China, c. 2000 BC, in a long ago time, called the Bronze Age, something amazing happened. People figured out how to mix two special metals, copper and tin, to make a new kind of super material, bronze. This magic alloy was much stronger and tougher than anything humans had ever used before. Imagine axes that could chop down trees effortlessly, swords that sliced through leather and bone like butter, and tools that could till the land with ease. The Bronze Age was like getting a toolbox full of superpowers, in a land far away, near a mighty river called the Yellow River, two powerful families ruled, the Shang and the Zhou. These clever folks became masters of bronze working, crafting weapons and tools so magnificent they wouldn't be seen again for hundreds and hundreds of years, not even in other parts of the world. Their blades gleamed like sunshine, their armor held strong like mountains, and their plows carved the earth like magic fingers. The Shang and Zhou dynasties, armed with their bronze wonders, built powerful kingdoms and laid the foundations for what would become one of the greatest civilizations in history, so, whenever you see something made of bronze, remember, it's a whisper from a time when humans first tasted the power of metal, a time when two kingdoms rose to greatness on the wings of a miracle alloy. That's the story of the Bronze Age. A time of invention, power, and the incredible journey of a metal that changed the world. A codified system of laws, ancient Babylon, c. 1754 BC, in the ancient land of Babylonia, around 4000 years ago, a mighty king named Hammurabi reigned. He wasn't just any king, though. Hammurabi was such a stickler for fairness and justice that he earned the nickname, the lawgiver. He wasn't just giving out rules like a grumpy teacher, though. Hammurabi actually created a whole system of laws, a big book of rules called the Code of Hammurabi. Now, this wasn't just a few scribbles on a clay tablet. This was a complex legal document with 282 rules. It covered everything from the tiniest squabbles between neighbors, like who stole the other's onion, to the most serious crimes like murder and theft. Some of the rules might seem strange to us today, like the famous, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, edict. That means if someone poked out your eye, the punishment was for them to lose an eye too. Sounds harsh, right? But back then, it was a way to make sure everyone understood that everyone had to follow the rules, no matter who they were, the Code of Hammurabi was a big deal for its time. It was one of the first written legal codes in the world, and it helped bring order and stability to Babylonia. It even influenced other cultures and legal systems for centuries to come. So, next time you hear someone say, an eye for an eye, remember, that saying comes from a long line of people who, like Hammurabi, believed in fairness and justice for all, even 4,000 years ago. Archimedes's death ray, 3rd century BC, in the ancient city of Syracuse, rumor whispers of ingenious machines built by the mind of Archimedes, machines so mind-boggling they seem like magic. One of these wonders was a giant iron claw, like a monstrous crab arm, that snatched enemy ships out of the water and tossed them aside. But another machine, called the Death Ray, truly makes the imagination spin, imagine, if you will, countless giant mirrors, gleaming like silver shields in the sun. Archimedes, the master of math and science, used these mirrors not for vanity, but for war. Their purpose? To gather the fiery gaze of the sun and hurl it, with blinding brilliance, upon enemy ships. The legend goes that this concentrated beam of sunlight would set the wooden vessels ablaze, turning the sea into a pyre of burning ships. Now, if we put on our scientist hats and peek through the lens of modern experiments, we discover that things might not be so simple. We've tried to recreate the death ray, but the sun's warmth, even focused by a multitude of mirrors, might not be quite enough to light a bonfire on the open sea. So, what was the truth behind this legendary weapon? Instead of fiery doom, the death ray may have played a different trick. The blinding reflection of the sun off those mirrors could create a dazzling confusion on the water. 
Imagine trying to row your ship towards a city while staring into a thousand suns. It would be hard to see. Hard to think straight, hard to fight. The death ray, then, might have been less about burning ships and more about messing with the minds of the sailors, turning them into stumbling, sun-dazzled ducks in the battlefield of the sea. So, while the idea of a sun-powered warship destroyer might be a bit too fantastic, even for a genius like Archimedes, the story of the death ray still holds a powerful charm. It reminds us that innovation and creativity can take many forms, even if they don't always result in fiery explosions. In the end, even a distraction ray can be a powerful weapon, proving that sometimes, the greatest victories are won not with fire, but with a well-placed bit of dazzling confusion. Ancient Egyptian compact mirrors, c. 2900 BC, looking one's best was a serious business in ancient Egypt, as both sexes made use of makeup to achieve that distinctive signature look so often seen in artifacts. The compact mirror developed in Egypt was a highly polished bronze disc mounted on a wooden or ivory handle. The modern silvered glass mirror was invented in the 19th century. So there you have it, 13 ancient technologies that would be right at home in our modern world. These innovations show us just how resourceful and clever our ancestors were. But it's just the tip of the iceberg. History is full of hidden gems just waiting to be unearthed. If you're hungry for more, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss out on future dives into the past. And in the comments, let me know what ancient technology surprised you the most, or what you'd like to see me explore next.